Hi, this is Ahmad from Integer Audio. Our channel is focused on audio and music production. Please subscribe if you are interested in this sort of content and don't forget to visit our website for more in-depth reviews. In this video, we will have a look at a free plugin from Bertum Audio. This is a unique denoiser that could be used in different situations. This is a plugin that you would want to use if you are a musician, a content creator or a podcaster. There are many scenarios where you would need to denoise audio because of imperfect surrounding conditions. This one offers ease of use and dynamic treatment with 5 EQ bands. So now without any further ado, let's have a look at the plugin's anatomy and functionality. We have an example that I recorded from my microphone. There is a considerable amount of noise in this recording, which is something you don't want on your videos, podcasts or anything. So let's get rid of that and clean the audio. Hey, I'm recording this on my Behringer microphone right now. There's some noises in the background from a fan and there's some microphone noise as well, I think. So how is this going along? Okay, so one of the things I like to do is I find a portion of the recording where there's only noise. Thus, I can identify which frequencies I'll be addressing. I will go extreme with the processing, then I'll gradually back off to set a nice balance between the noise cut off and the actual audio content present in my sample. You can actually permit some noise to be in there if it's not too much, that's up to you to decide. Sometimes if the noise is not even that much noticeable, I wouldn't even bother denoising because if it happens and the noise shares certain frequencies with the voice, then you'll be taking information from that voice and it may not sound as transparent as you wanted. So be wise when it comes to that. Right now I'm going to roll off um, all the cuts that I did uh, in these frequencies and I'll try to identify where exactly this noise information is located in the frequency spectrum. So we have some information coming from the low frequencies. I'm going to make sure not to cut too much from the lows so it doesn't really make my voice too thin. Um, and I'm going to be experimenting with this. There's also this um, high pass filter and there's a low pass filter on the other end that I'm going to uh, be experimenting with as well just to find, as I said, a perfect balance. I'm starting to get some noise information now. It's occurring in the mid-range at around 1 to 1.4 kilohertz. Since we're getting more noise information at the higher frequencies, typically above 2000, I'm going to enable high frequency bias, which is going to be more sensitive to these frequencies now and more processing power. I'm done processing this for now, but I'll go back and forth between the playback and the editing to see if there's anything else that could be fixed. Hey, I'm recording this on my Behringer microphone right now. There's some noises in the background from a fan and there's some microphone noise as well, I think. So how is this going along? My voice just sounded too thin because I did too much processing to the low end, so I just fixed that. Hey, I'm recording this on my Behringer microphone right now. There's some noises in the background from a fan and there's some microphone noise as well, I think. So how is this going along? Hey, I'm recording this on my Behringer microphone right now. And now I'll be going to the processing again, but I'll just try to make it as minimal as possible.
Okay, so it sounds fine. I'll leave the high pass on. So anything below 100 hertz is going to be cut. Maybe just for fun, I'll try to turn on the low pass on and off just to see how much it affects my voice and if it makes a difference at all to the noise itself. It's probably not going to sound great, but just to see how it processes the audio that goes through it. Hey. I'm recording this on my Behringer microphone right now. There's some noises in the background from a fan and there's some microphone noise as well, I think. So, how is this going along? Hey, I'm recording this on my Behringer microphone right now. There's some noises in the background from a fan and there's some microphone noise as well, I think. So, how is this going along? Hey, I'm recording this on my Behringer microphone right now. There's some noises in the background from a fan and there's some microphone noise as well, I think. So, how is this going along? This sounds like a decent balance for now. There's still some noise in between the phrases, but it's not too much. And as an additional processor, I could use a noise gate to eliminate that noise. The denoiser and a noise gate would work in good conjunction in this case. <laughs> Here is a real drum loop that has a static noise on it. I already treated it and wanted to show you before and after. I followed the same steps that I did in the previous examples. I wanted to explore the different sounds and different scenarios where this tool becomes valuable. This marks the end of this video. Here are some of my thoughts on Bertom's denoiser. I think it's very useful, intuitive and effective. Not to mention that you could get it for free if you wanted, but it's always better if you could donate and support that developer. This kind of stuff really takes a long time to make. One thing is I... or two things actually. One is I would have liked if there was a gain knob, so if there was severe reduction rates going on, I could always add more volume to the output signal like we heard on the guitar example. Would have been also good to have a spectrum analyzer, but it's it's okay as well to just use your ears in this scenario. I personally could see myself using this for future denoising purposes. What do you think about it? Is it worth it? Let us know. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, thank you.